Visualization or mental imagery involves using our imagination to rehearse or experience situations vividly without actual physical execution. And I find this such an interesting practice. It's something I have been doing in a few different ways for many years, and I'd love to share about that at the end of this video. But first I wanna dive into some of the science behind visualization and also some of the psychological effects that this practice might have on us. So if you are someone who's a little bit skeptical about the practice of visualization, or if you're someone who's interested in visualization and would love to learn more about the potential ways that it can help us, then this video is definitely for you. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by Element. Hey guys, it's Robin and welcome to the Science of Self-Care. On this channel, we talk about health science, we talk about life philosophy, and we do a whole lot of self-care experimentation. I'm very excited for today's topic because I grew up with two scientist parents and especially my dad has always had very little patience for anything that isn't clearly proven by a scientific study or doesn't have legitimate logic to back it up. But I've always found this a little bit limiting because an absence of evidence is not the same as evidence against something. So for example, I think meditation was traditionally something that for a long time was written off by the scientific community and only in recent decades have we really come to understand the physiological and mental benefits of a meditation practice. And so just because something hasn't been proven doesn't mean there isn't validity to it. And I think a practice that's often categorized very similarly to meditation is visualization, which involves using our imagination to rehearse or experience situations vividly in our mind. Before we get into the potential science behind visualization, I want to offer a quick note about the field of psychology in general. Many studies in this space aren't the highest quality, they have small sample sizes, fuzzy methodologies, and findings that aren't necessarily reproducible. And this doesn't mean that they're completely useless, but it does mean that we should take them with a grain of salt. The good news is that a practice like visualization is a low risk activity, so there's likely no harm in playing around with this in your own life, even if the benefits are still being explored and not thoroughly proven. I will post a Notion link down below if you'd like to get into the nitty gritty of existing literature on both meditation and visualization, but I think that even imperfect studies can give us a starting point to better understand human behavior. And when it comes to self-care, I believe there's value in exploring ideas that might be useful to us, even if they're not definitively true in the way the laws of physics are. One of my favorite authors, Derek Sivers, has a book called Useful Not True, a concept I would love to dive into in a future video. But for now, I want to share this perspective that effective self-care lives at the intersection of objective data and subjective experience. And if a practice supports your mental and physical well-being, even without mountains of research behind it, it's probably still worth your time. That's my personal take at least. Now let's explore the limited research behind visualization. First off, our brain is an incredible prediction machine. It's basically constantly scanning for patterns and uses past experience to predict what we're likely going to see or feel next. So when we visualize something, when we imagine it in vivid detail, we're actually feeding our brain a new experience to work with. And this has been shown by many studies that mental imagery uses a lot of the same brain regions as real life imagery. So when we imagine an experience in our mind, it can be considered a lighter version of actually experiencing that thing. And this can train us in a number of ways. One of those ways is it just primes our attention. Our attention is extremely selective. At any given moment, there's so much going on around us and our brains have an incredible ability to focus in, hone in on the things that are most important to us. So there's a lot of things we're constantly perceiving, but it doesn't even reach our conscious mind. And when we visualize something, it primes our attention to recognize that. It's kind of like the classic example of when you buy a new car, you will suddenly see that specific model of car everywhere because your attention has been primed for that. It's top of mind for you. Whereas if you didn't own that car, you probably would just go about your day not even noticing all the times that that specific car model came across your path. So in theory, we might be able to use mental imagery to prime our attention for what we want most and this may help us notice opportunities related to our clear visual goals. 
But this may go beyond mental practice. Several studies suggest that visualization can improve athletic performance. Mental rehearsal like visualization actually activates motor areas of our brain, especially if we're imagining that we're moving. But one of my favorite examples of this mental rehearsal activating motor neurons is from the book The Expectation Effect by David Robson. I love this book. Highly recommend you read it if you're interested in this topic. This book covers a study by researchers at the Cleveland Clinic that asked people to imagine flexing their arm muscles and abducting their pinkies in their mind. And they did this for 15 minutes a day. There was no gym, no movement. And after 12 weeks, the strength of the group that was practicing visualization increased by up to 35% just from the mental rehearsal. This finding was supported by a 2016 systematic review of 19 studies that found that mental imagery plus physical practice improves strength more than just physical training alone. And also mental imagery during periods of immobilization, like recovering from an injury, prevented strength loss, AKA it helped maintain muscle strength during that period of recovery. And lastly, this review found that internal imagery from a first person perspective seems to yield greater strength gains versus using an external perspective. Again, there was a lot of variation in protocols and very small sample sizes, so you have to take these results with a grain of salt, but I think if you are an athlete, there's really no harm in playing around with visualization and seeing if it helps your training, your strength, etc. But speaking of improving athletic performance, I want to share the sponsor of today's video, Element Electrolytes. Element continues to be my absolute favorite accompaniment at the gym. I bring it every single time I work out. If I do something super sweaty, like a sweaty hike or hot yoga, I make sure to refuel my body, not just with water, but also electrolytes. And the reason I love Element specifically is that their ingredient list is so, so simple. I have a sensitive digestive system. I just want the basics, magnesium, potassium, sodium, and then a delicious little flavoring to make it a very positive experience. I think Element incentivizes me to want to go work out just to drink something so delicious. And very excitingly, Element has come out with a new flavor called Lemonade Salt. If you are someone who really likes the fruity salt flavors, you're going to love Lemonade Salt. It is the perfect flavor for summer. Right now, Element is offering a free sampler pack to anyone who orders through drinkelement.com slash selfcare. You can also use this QR code here on screen. You can get a free sample pack of eight different flavors to really get to know your favorite flavor, maybe even share Element with a friend. Thank you, Element, for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to all things visualization. So to recap, mental imagery can activate the same motor neurons that we would use for that real life physical activity. Some researchers hypothesize that this may influence our neuroplasticity, our brain's ability to reorganize itself by forming new neural connections throughout our life. Honestly, there is so much more I could say about this, but the broader point is that visualization trains our brain and our bodies for the experience that we're visualizing. So we can already experience something without actually having to experience it, which is very powerful because visualization is something you can do anywhere, anytime, it's completely free. Now let's talk a little more psychology. I think there's a lot of psychological principles that support the power of visualization, even simple things like confirmation bias. If we are visualizing ourselves going into a party and everyone is happy to see us, they're super talkative and chatty, and we're effortlessly socializing with everyone, if that's what we're visualizing several days before a party, when we get to that party, we are going to have some level of confirmation bias that is going to be searching for little clues of people that are happy to see us, that are excited to chat with us. Whereas let's say we were to visualize ourselves going into that same party and being totally awkward. No one wants to talk to us. We're sitting alone in the corner and it's no fun. Well, then the second we walk in, we have that in our mind. We are not only priming our own expectations for this to happen, but we're also gonna seek confirmation in our surroundings. So if someone looks away from us at one moment, we're gonna assume that's confirming our suspicion that they don't actually wanna talk to us. And so we're gonna pick out all of these little things that maybe are completely benign and use them to confirm the bias that we're going into the party with. <laughs> So this also touches upon the concept of a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe something's possible, you act like it is, and that changes your behavior. 
And so if you're going into this party with a positive mindset, maybe you burst through the door smiling and you're ready to chat with everyone. Whereas if you believe no one's gonna wanna talk to you, when you open the door, you might have very sheepish body language. You might be closed off. So our expectations not only change how we pick out little experiences to confirm our biases, but it will also change our own behavior, which of course has a ripple effect on a number of things, including other people's behavior. One last psychological principle principle that visualization touches upon is cognitive dissonance. The mental discomfort we experience when we hold conflicting beliefs, values, or attitudes, or when our behavior contradicts our beliefs. And when we continually imagine something in our minds that's different from our current reality, we create cognitive dissonance within ourselves. And this feeling can drive us to rectify the dissonance to align our reality to our clear mental vision. For example, if we have a very cluttered home and we visualize it being clean every day for some period of time, let's say a few weeks, it's soon going to feel odd that our home is cluttered and we'll start to take steps to bring our reality in alignment with our visualizations. Because what is familiar to us is what becomes comfortable and visualization performed with intention can make our goals feel more familiar, comfortable, and within reach. But visualization isn't just about performance or outcomes. It also has deep emotional and physiological benefits. For example, when we visualize calming or empowering scenes, we can lower our cortisol, slow our heart rate, activate the parasympathetic nervous system, basically our body's rest and restore mode. And studies have shown that guided imagery can reduce pain, improve mood, and even support immune function. So a lot of this is mental, but a lot of this is also physical. And honestly, the fact that we even make such a distinction between the mind and the body is so funny because it's all interconnected. Our thoughts influence our biochemistry, our biochemistry influences our thoughts. And I think visualization is a beautiful way to take a more active role in shaping those thoughts and that physiology that we may not feel like we always have much control over. <laughs> Okay, so there is a lot more to say on visualization and I'm happy to do a follow-up part two of this video if you guys are interested. But now I actually wanna share some practical ways that I have practiced visualization in my own life for many years. And honestly, if I even think back to when I was little, I often did a lot of visualizing without even realizing it. When I had something exciting come up, I would imagine myself doing that thing with so much happiness and positivity long before it ever happened. So I'm just kind of a daydreamy visualization type person naturally. But as an adult, I've cultivated some very conscious practices to make visualization a part of, I would say, my self-care routine. <laughs> so one specific practice that I've been doing now for about four years, maybe five years, I'm trying to think if I started this during COVID, Anyways, for a number of years, I have been doing this one specific thing before bed, and that is completing a one-page journal entry. And I do this every single night. I'll show you guys here on screen how I divide my journal page. The top is a gratitude list. I like to just practice gratitude every single day for my own happiness and appreciation for life. So I will list 10 things that I'm grateful for. The top ones are typically the same, like I'm grateful for my health, my home, and my husband. But then as I go down the list of 10, there's things that are constantly circulating. Maybe I'm grateful for a specific experience that day. I will add that in and that just puts me in a very positive mindset. Then after completing my gratitude list, I will do a list of 10, I would call this kind of like visualizations of my future reality, but I write them in present tense. So for example, right now I don't own a home, but maybe that's something I will want in the future. In that case, I will write, I'm grateful for my extremely beautiful home with lots of natural light. And so I write kind of a future gratitudes list as if these 10 things are already part of my reality. And while writing that, I'm basically visualizing these things and creating a positive expectation towards them. So looking back over the years, it's quite crazy how many things I have put on paper and then they've actually materialized. For example, this YouTube channel. I started writing that I was grateful for my 100,000 YouTube silver play button plaque back when I probably had 28 subscribers. And if you've been following this channel for a while, 
There were many years where I had 20 subscribers, 50 subscribers. I was not, my videos were not good in the beginning. So the growth of everything was very slow, but I just, every single day I would be grateful for my YouTube plaque. And lo and behold, last year I reached 100,000 subscribers and got my YouTube plaque. And to be honest, the plaque to me is not even important. It was more just a clear milestone that I could reach for to help me build my dream, which is to build a large channel here on YouTube where where people are inspired to take care of themselves, where people fall in love with taking care of their bodies and minds. And so that was just a milestone on this journey. And now that is very much a part of my reality and I'm so excited and grateful for it. But also I was expecting it because I've been writing about it for years. Another example from my life is that for two years I would write that I was very grateful for my TEDx talk, which is crazy because I'm not a public speaker. I think I just naturally have this passion for sharing my ideas, which is why I have a YouTube channel. So it was always a dream of mine to give a TEDx talk. And lo and behold, last year, last winter, I got an email asking if I would like to give a TEDx talk for TEDx AUC College. And that's what I did. Last spring, I gave this talk and it's just crazy because this was in my journal years before it ever materialized in the real world. And because I prime myself in these very specific ways, I show up to the world as if these things are part of my reality. And that definitely influences my expectations. That definitely influences my own behavior. It's been really fun to look back over the years and see all of the different things that I've written down in my journal and how they've materialized in my life. So related to this, another way that I use visualization is if there is something I'm really dreading doing, let me just give taxes as an example. I hate administrative things. So whenever I have to do those things that I just don't really wanna do, for several days leading up to, I usually give myself some time to work into it. For several days leaving, leading up to an activity that I don't really wanna do, I will imagine myself, just a few minutes a day, I will sit and I will imagine myself loving doing that. I will imagine myself loving doing taxes, smiling at my computer, maybe with a little drink in hand, it's a good time. And I will just imagine myself smiling and loving the experience of doing something I don't really wanna do. And after several days to a week, of this visualization, I feel so ready to jump into that activity that I didn't wanna do. It's really helped me get through a lot of things that I feel a natural repulsion towards. So I highly recommend if there's something you're not looking forward to doing, just spend a week visualizing yourself loving that thing and that experience. And before you know it, it won't even be painful. It might even be enjoyable. <laughs> And another beautiful time I like to imagine things in my mind's eye is when I do red light therapy. I don't have a specific practice for my morning red light therapy sessions. Sometimes I try to do pure meditation, which is where you're clearing all the thoughts out of your brain and you're just trying to sit in true silence. But sometimes I'll have more daydreaming moments and I will visualize things I'm looking forward to, visualize my dreams that I'd like to make come true. So I think this is another peaceful moment in the morning where you can set a positive expectation for your day by practicing mental rehearsal or visualization. So those are the specific ways I practice visualization. I would love to know if you are someone who practices visualization or if you're someone who's been wanting to try visualization practices. I would love to hear about your experiences, your wisdoms down in the comments. The comment section is my favorite part of YouTube. It's so much fun connecting with you guys. So please share. Thank you guys so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.